Chapter 11 Scrambled Egg When we come into the classroom, Mr. Daniels makes an announcement. Attention, Fantasticos! We have brand new Fantastico seats, so find, yourself, find yours and settle in. Jessica is sitting next to Suki and staring at Shay like their separation is a great injustice. It turns out that I'm sitting in the front row next to Keisha, the girl who can bake and write in the, at the same time while I can't do either. We don't speak all morning, and I can't stop worrying that she doesn't like me. When she finally glances at me, I blurt out, I don't mind being your friend. Keisha looks annoyed. You don't have to do me any favors. No, I say, trying to undo what I didn't mean to say. I just mean... And then I stop, because I don't know what I meant. And I'm nervous and embarrassed. And that is never good when I'm trying to say something. Every word is another shovel full of dirt from the hole I've dug for myself. So I figure my best bet is to shut my mouth. But, but the silence gets too long and too loud. So I try to think of something to say. I always knew what to say to my grandpa, and he always knew what to say to me. I wish he were here to whisper in my ear. And then I think of Alice and how she argued with the Humpty Dumpty about using the right words. I turn to Keisha and blurt out, Do you like eggs? Eggs? She asks. Oh no, she thinks I'm a barrel full of crazy. But I keep going because sometimes my tongue goes on without my say-so. Yeah, I love eggs. Scrambled eggs, fried eggs, poached, e poached on toast, and boiled eggs. I love peeling the shell off the boiled egg, don't you? I even like egg salad, which my brother won't eat even if someone holds him down. Her eyebrows scrunch up. Reminds me of angry caterpillars. That's incredibly interesting. Then she searches inside her desk for something. I know this move. It's a polite way of ignoring me. People do it a lot. Finally, I just put my head down. Grandpa used to say that Alice in Wonderland, falling down the rabbit hole, was just like real life. I didn't used to understand what he meant, but I do now. There can't be any place on the planet scarier than the school cafeteria. I hold my tray so tight, my fingers hurt. I hear, Hey, Allie! It's Shay. She's standing with Jessica and a few others. Yeah? I ask. Do you want to sit with us for lunch? Of course I don't want to sit with them. But I'm getting tired of sitting alone and having everyone else see me sit alone. Besides that, Shay and Jessica and some other girls all have these woven friendship bracelets. I've never had the kinds of friends who have matching bracelets. But I've always wanted them. It's like the bracelet tells the world that the person wearing it has someone who cares about them. Not like a family member that has to care but someone who just likes you. I want to feel part a part of something. Anything, I guess. Shay is overly happy that I said yes. I sit down after glancing at the seat to make sure it won't be, I won't be sitting in a pool of glue. Shay motions to me to sit next to her. She and Jessica smile. That smile, that smile, that on the outside seems fine, but you're gut tells you to be careful of. There are a few other girls. Max is there with one other boy. Jessica points at Albert and they start laughing. I look over and don't see anything funny. Can you believe it? Shay asks. How pathetic is that? Hey Albert, she calls. Is that supposed to be a fashion statement? I still don't get it. He's wearing his usual flint shirt and jeans. What are they so worked up on? Why are they so worked up now? Shay hits me on the side of the arm and points down at his feet. The backs of his sneakers have been cut out. Shay calls him over and he comes. I don't know why everyone does what she says. Even me. Today, anyway. What's the matter? She asks him. Don't you have money for shoes? Quite the contrary, Albert began, begins. But given the choice of buying new sneakers that I will outgrow in three months... Or a chemistry set that I can use for an undefined amount of time, this seemed a clear choice. They are in fine shape except for being a bit short. Did you hear that? Shay asked. He chopped the back off his the back of his shoes off. Like slippers. 
Jessica adds, next, he'll be wearing a robe. Shay turns to her. I think robes would be cool. We should wear them tomorrow. Yeah, that would be cool, Jessica says. Shay laughs, but I don't think Jessica knows Shay isn't laughing because of the robes. I think Shay said something dumb to see if Jessica would go along. Sometimes I think Jessica would follow Shay out of an airplane without a parachute. Then Shay turns to me. Well, Allie, she asks, what do you think of wearing robes tomorrow? I like to tell her it's dumb, but I say, not my thing. Is that so? Well, do you think? what do you think of Albert's slip and his slippers? I feel like I'm in one of those old detective movies that Grandpa loved. In a cramped small room under a bright light, being asked a question I don't want to answer. The thought to stick up for him goes through my head, but that doesn't seem like the right answer for Shay. They're pretty dopey, I say. What a weirdo, huh? I've made Shay happy. I feel terrible. And I know that I, that I am going to feel even worse when the shade comes down over Albert's face, when he looks sad. But that never comes. He just stands there eating Doritos and studying us like we are lab mice. I think it's curious that you worry about what I have on my feet when three of you are wearing red shirts. Not a wise color. Red is the color of stoplights and signs, bad wounds, warning lights, and the most severe of sunburns. It represents red alerts and high fevers. Red numbers show a loss in accounting. Red represents danger. I think of all of the red marks that cover my papers from teachers. How I hate to get them back. Jessica laughs loudest. What a weirdo, Albert. Furthermore, he says, any crew members of Star Trek's Starship Enterprise who wears a red shirt never appears in another episode. Frankly, I think you've made poor choices. They all burst into loud laughter. Albert, Max says, it's only a TV show, dude. Not a very good one, either. Albert's arm stops dead on the way to his mouth with another Dorito. Not a very good one? Albert, Shay says, leaning forward a bit. You go right ahead and ignore what you look like. But it's the rest of us who suffer. We have to look at you. Actually, he says, I don't take my appearance lightly. I take you lightly. And with that, he turns and is gone before she can pull out some other mean thing. And I wish I was more like Albert. Seeing him shuffle away in those sneakers makes me want to be better. I'm not perfect. Well, at least I'm not mean. And then my heart sinks, because I realize that I just was. I guess I did, did it because I was lonely. Now I know that there are worse things than being lonely. Chapter 12 What's your problem, Albert? Light from the hallway pours into my room as my mom opens the door. Hey, honey. Hey. I came in to check on you. You seemed very quiet at dinner tonight. Something going on? Mean kids at school. Oh, Allie Bug, I'm sorry you had to put up with that. What happened? Well, the kids who were mean? Yeah. I was kind of one of them. Oh, she says with a sigh. I'm surprised by that, Allie. Tell me what happened. Those girls that came into Peterson's that time, well, they asked me to have lunch with them. I sat at their table, but then they started being mean to this kid named Albert about his clothes. I looked up into her eyes, and I went along with it. I feel bad about it. My mom brushes my forehead with her fingertips. You're not a little girl anymore, Allie, so it's not too soon to decide what kind of person you want to be. Of course I know what kind of person you are, and I love you for it, she kisses me on the forehead. You made a mistake. Everyone does. Just do your best to make it right, that's all. The words I'm sorry are powerful ones. Yeah, okay, I'll make it right with him. That's my girl, she says, kissing my forehead one more time before leaving. The next morning at school, I am wondering how I can make things right with Albert. I'm drawing a pigeon wedding in my sketchbook. I don't know I don't know that Keisha is standing behind me. You drew that? 
I moved my arm to cover it. Why would you cover it? If I could draw like that, I'd put commercials on TV about it. Thanks, I mumble. I don't know why I'm embarrassed, but I am. Keisha sits in her chair as I stare at her head full of thin braids, thinking it must take three days to do all that. So beautiful. I just love it. Not like my boring hair that just hangs there. I reach out and touch her hair. She turns towards me all of a sudden. What are you doing? Oh, I... Sorry, there was a mosquito. Sometimes I can't believe the things I do. It's like my arm has its own brain. Uh-huh, Keisha says. Just then, Albert walks in, and he looks upset. I want to be able to tell my mom that I made things right with him, so I go over. Albert, are you okay? I ask, wondering if he'll tell me to strap myself to a rocket and light the fuse. I have a problem. I'm sorry about the cafeteria thing, I blurt out, his eyebrows raise. That didn't bother me. No need to apologize. It didn't bother you to have a, f a table full of people make fun of you? You're kidding. Why would I be kidding? Can it be he really doesn't care what people think of him? We just stare at each other. If that didn't bother him at all, and this new problem really does, then it must really be bad. Maybe it has to do with the bruises he has all the time. Can I help? I ask. No offense, but I don't really think so. Okay, I mumble. It's just a problem that I can't get out of my head. I feel like I won't be able to relax until I find an answer. Do you want to talk about it? I know sometimes even... I know sometimes when I have a problem, I talk it out with my brother or mom. Even if I don't find an answer, I feel better anyway. Well, I wait. I've been wondering, if an insect is flying inside a moving train car, is it traveling faster than the train itself? If the insect flies in the opposite direction that the train is moving, is it then traveling more slowly than the train? Obviously, if the fly is on the wall, it is moving at the same speed. As long as it's walk it isn't walking. But the movement within the movement is a puzzle to me. Oh. He turns to me, a little intense. You see the problem here. He doesn't ask, he tells. I know he doesn't really think I can help. Who knows if I could possibly figure out the science part of what he's talking about. But my mind shows me that the insect in the train car. It's a dragonfly with brilliant greenish-blue wings and tiny goggles over its eyes. The car is old with dark wood walls and dark green curtains, like from Grandpa's Westerns. And the people have old-fashioned clothes. I see them like they're with me now. Some of the men are sleeping. One is waving the dragonfly off with a newspaper, not even noticing its tiny goggles. Ladies with the most beautiful dresses sit there, too. I see a girl who is with her mother, and her mother keeps asking the girl if she is enjoying the ride, and the girl keeps saying yes, being sure to have a happy-sounding voice. I don't know everything about that girl, but I do know that she has a lot more to worry about than the insect on the train. She doesn't fit in. She's all dressed up in fancy clothes and has to pretend to be someone she's not. She wants to muck around, help build fences. She wants to ride a horse the real way, not a side saddle like her mother insists. When I come back from my mind movie, Albert has already walked away, but I don't care. I can't help thinking about the girl on the train and how she feels. Like she wants to do so much, but she's held back and it makes her feel heavy and angry. Like she's dragging a concrete block around all the time. I'd like to help her break free from that. 